Hi everybody, this is Jim Kemp with 705 CNC. Hey, I've got a new friend here. Uh, this was a gift to me recently. Uh, it's an Adept robot. Uh, I forget exactly which one this is. It's the uh, Cobra S600. So it's a little uh, robot that was being used as a glue machine before. So uh, the problem is this thing is dead. So doesn't seem to work anymore and the dead part is the electronics the the software the electronics are the bad part the actual joints and motors and all the mechanical stuff inside this thing are still good so the plan is over the next months and maybe years we're going to rip this thing apart and put all new electronics in this thing so we'll see how that goes Step number one of my crazy plan is to put uh, motors like these into this guy. So these are uh, clear path uh, servo motors. So it's a brushless three phase servo motor with all the electronics built into the end of the motor. So all you need to do to, to uh, make this motor move is to provide step and direction just like a stepper motor. So the plan is to put these motors in here. Uh, and retrofit so that uh, we eliminate the old electronics that's in this thing. So, yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Okay, so last weekend I built this uh, wood platform. I'm not uh, super proud of it, but uh, I think it's gonna do the job. So, just a bunch of uh, lumber from the local lumber yard thrown together, but uh, I think it'll hold the, the robot up. It's, it's a little wonky on the floor, but I don't have anything shoved underneath the feet yet. So, but I think this will, will hold the robot so that, you know, we can get in here and, and crank around on this thing and, and do some work. So that'll be the next step. I know that uh, some people probably think this is heresy, ripping this thing apart, but it's really no good without a lot of expense. and. I'm not sure you can get the electronics and the controls for it anymore. So uh, we'll pop that out and have a look at that next, just to give you an idea of what, uh, what the existing one looked like. Okay, so uh, uh, I've had this robot about a month now, and the guy that gave it to me was absolutely sure that it's okay to take this thing down to bits. It's, uh, he's got like three or four of them. Uh, and this one he said was completely dead and only used for parts so uh you know i, I just feel bad about ripping this thing up, up right but uh that's that's just the way it goes so i've been i've been uh anxious to get into this thing but i want to make these videos so i've been holding off but uh today's the day we'll start on this thing I have been inside this part of the robot already, so uh, I did open this thing up and disconnect some of these wires just to have a look. So this is what this thing looks like, right? So here's the old electronics that came with this thing. So everything was packed onto this board or this uh, heat sink. So you know, it looks like there's one, two, three, f at least four amplifiers. Um, maybe more for the smaller ones. Maybe there's a five and six in here. I'm not sure. So, uh, pretty, pretty crazy. I mean, this is highly engineered, very well made, but completely useless at this point. You know, maybe I could throw this on, on eBay or something and somebody else could use it. But, uh, uh, the guy that I got this from couldn't use it at all. So that's it. So let me bring you around and uh, look inside this thing. So that's what it looks like on the inside of this guy. Uh, just a ton of wires coming down to those amplifier boards and the brains. So you can see the uh, first axis motor up in there. And it's kind of interesting. It looks like they, uh, they just bolted on these slabs of aluminum around the motor because it must have gotten really crazy hot and then they just put this little tiny muffin fan down here in the bottom 
uh, just to circulate the air around, I guess. There's an aluminum plate down there. Uh, so they're, they must have just been using uh, 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 the cooling of the aluminum. But uh, it still must have gotten roasted hot for them to have to put those aluminum slabs on there. So that's pretty nutty. There's also, yeah, so this is looking up inside the second axis. And you can see more of those crazy aluminum slabs uh, just bolted onto the side of the motor. Again, I'm assuming for heat dissipation. It just got too crazy hot. So... Uh, yeah, so another motor. That, this one... Uh, let's see what this does. So... If I can get back far enough. So that's that drives it up and down. That won't be too bad. And then there's a little tiny, tiny motor. And this thing is really small. This is this is uh, maybe an inch across. Is that an? It's way smaller than a NEMA 23. So yeah, I don't know what the heck that is. I tried looking up. Uh, an amplifier for it and uh, not a lot of luck so oh, that's kind of cute it's a brake on top of the motor so that it keeps this thing from dropping once you remove power so I think that's the only motor in here that has a brake and it doesn't seem like it works that well because I can back drive against this brake anyway but so yeah we replaced this motor replace the one that's in here and replace the one down here and uh, we'll have a Scara robot again so yeah that's the plan we'll uh, we'll put this motor up in here as the uh, first primary mover to uh, swing this first axis around we'll see how that goes and after we rip rip all the, uh, the the wiring and cabling out of all this stuff so I guess first things first is this is some of some more of this and see what's inside of it. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, this is kind of interesting. So I pulled the top of this this off, right? So uh, this used to be sitting on top here. Uh, I just pulled a couple of the screws off of it and fished all the cables out of it. Kind of pulled the guts out, if you will. So, you know, this used to, well, takes all the cables up and over from uh, this guy right so but then uh, down in here uh, they had the cable going to the next axis up in here so they've got all this the splooge down in here so I, I pulled a lot of it out already you know the screwdriver got a lot of it out of there but so I'm hoping that down in there if I just take those bolts out the uh, the gearbox for this first axis will drop out that would be pretty sweet so yeah, interesting. It's uh, looking pretty pretty bare already on this first axis. So, we'll see. Well, as you can see, I am well past the point of no return on this thing. So, yeah, I've separated the first first axis. So, pretty interesting design. They just have this this big pin with all these bolts holding it down into the gearbox you know I thought that this plate on top was some kind of you know bearing on top no this is just some kind of cover plate it doesn't do anything it's just held down with a couple of small bolts so that doesn't do anything the whole thing is is held down with this uh, uh, I guess you call this a, an RV in the industry I don't know if the V re reducing something or other I have no idea but uh, it's even got some oil down in here so and there's a there's an o-ring that uh, keeps the oil from coming out I guess I don't know I'm no uh, mechanical engineer but uh, yeah it's, it seemed odd that this whole axis would be hanging off of this this gearbox but it must be designed for that so yeah I cut my first cable too so we're definitely uh, uh, committed now so there's no going back well, you know, I guess you could solder that back, but uh, I'm not. So, pretty interesting. 
So, yeah, and you can see over here those those heat sinks more clearly. So, uh, yeah, they just got aluminum blocks uh, with some heat compound, and I guess you can't really see it easily, but there's a band that goes around the motor that holds holds the heat sinks up against the motor. Uh, the one that's, that's down in here, they're a little fancier, it turns out. These actually have holes up in here, so they're actually more like heat sinks. So, yeah, we'll, we'll look at those, but uh, I think this is going to come out pretty easily. I think there's a, a set of hole or uh, bolts around this thing, and then this whole thing will come up out. So we'll try that next. That'll be interesting, and I'll probably call it a night. Okay, with a lot of determination and effort, finally got this baby out of there. This is the, uh, the gearbox and motor for the first, first axis. So uh, it got a little crazy, uh, almost didn't get it out. There's some hidden bolts underneath this flange when you try to get this thing out. And uh, as you can see over there, I almost went to milling them out. I had a little Allen wrench and I broke the ball off the end of the Allen wrench trying to get one of the, the screws out. And I was going to have to resort to milling it out, but luckily I could fish a magnet down through the hole and pull the ball out. But it was uh, touch and go there for a bit. Almost gave up. So uh, this is what the, the first axis looks like. Motor and gearbox. So it's pretty cool. It's a, uh, let's see if I can get this off. It's a wave style gearbox. So as you uh, turn this, I'm not sure you can see this on the, on the video. But as you turn this, you can see this, this makes a wave uh, as this thing, this cup gets, gets moved around. It's got tiny little teeth around the edge here. And it uh, slowly moves the outside gear as you rotate this inside one. I haven't figured out what the ratio is, but it's gotta be a pretty high ratio. So yeah, this just sits on top of the motor. Uh, it's got a uh, larger than a half inch shaft on this NEMA 23 motor. So it's an unusually large shaft and it goes through a, a nice seal here. So this is all immersed in oil normally. So they went to great effort to get this all sealed up. So there was a lot of silicone rubber holding this all together. So uh, with this thing together, let's see if I can slide this back together. Yeah, so there's a flange. In fact, uh, I'll take the camera off the mount and go show you the flange and the base over there. So the, the motor bolts in from the bottom, the gearbox bolts in from the top, and there's a flange here in the middle, and there was a bunch of silicone to seal that all up. So when I took the, the top of the, the arm off, you could look down in here and just see that this thing was filled with oil. Uh, and the oil, so, you know, I turned the whole thing upside down to dump the oil out. And there was a lot of uh, black, nasty stuff in the oil, so this thing needed to be uh, serviced anyway. And it's also concerning, there's a bunch of rust on here. You know, I don't know how water got down in here and rusted all these, these external parts. You know, it's cosmetic, it's not that big a deal, but still, you know, it's an indication that at some point this thing was either in a really humid environment or, or water got in there directly somehow, so a bit of a concern, so. Let me take you down and show you the robot base over here. So this is what the robot base looks like. Uh, and here's that, that flange and a bunch more rust around it. And there's four little hidden bolts down in here that hold this ring in. And uh, so with the gearbox here, it's trying to reach down through one of the holes in the gearbox. So you have to take all the bolts out of the gearbox, rotate it a little bit to one of the holes lines up with one of these, these four hidden bolts and try to reach down in there and get those out. And that's when I broke off the head of my Allen wrench in one of these guys. So I thought I was going to have to come down in there and mill that out. But uh, luckily a magnet did the job. So yeah, this is what the, uh, the first casting looks like. It's just uh, an aluminum casting, probably weighs 20, 30 pounds. So, and this guy sits right inside here, right? Right inside here on that flange. So, yeah, the goal then is going to be how to how to manufacture a a uh, 
how to manufacture something on the front of a standard NEMA 23 motor that will mimic this, I think it's 14 millimeter shaft, 14 milli, unusually large. So you have to use that because it's got this nice uh, seal on here and this is all has to be sealed up over the top of the motor to prevent the oil from coming out. Evidently this thing has to be immersed in oil for this uh, wave, I don't know what to call it. Wait, I'll have to figure out what they call it. Use the proper terminology, but yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna just focus on getting this working first because if I you know, look at the rest of the robot arm, I'm sure I'm gonna get uh, overwhelmed. If I can get this working, you know, even at a minimum, we'll have a nice rotary base that we could use for other stuff, which would be cool. So that's kind of where we are. Thanks for watching.